So there's two great things about the 1400. <clears throat> and what makes it completely different from all other routers out there? And we all know it's part of a system, okay? But, and someone may say, ah, oh, that's not true. My blah, blah, blah brand can do this, but not as well. Okay, so here's what I'll call out. The router works on the rail or in conjunction with the rail. It's part of the overall system, okay, the 1400, right? But it also has exceptional dust extraction in all aspects of it. And important to that is somebody will say, oh, a lot of my router, blah, 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 brand has this. But if it's not easy to put on and off, you're not going to use it. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how easy the dust extraction is to put on and off as I step through this today. And you'll pick up some pointers on there because... You prob a lot of you out there have been uh, anticipating this. I think many of you said Rob from uh, Cinnaminson, my buddy. He's been anticipating this one. This one's for you, Rob. There's a lot of other people have reached out to us, so here we go. Okay. Oh, the other question I get all the time with the 14 edges is what accessories do I need? Okay, and I'll cover a couple of the top accessories for this. Okay, so <clears throat> over the years, and I saw this one time, someone said, how does that work with the rail in conjunction with the rail? And they see the flat spots here. And I saw one guy tell another guy once, oh, you can run it up against the rail like this. Well, in theory, you can. But my favorite over the years has been, someone said, you can actually use it up against this rib on the rail. So I, I told that person, yep, you can, but make sure you have a rail <laughs> for every diameter bit you have. Okay, so people get really confused with this, so I want to step through it. You're going to need these. These are the rods. These come with your 1400. They're in the bottom of your sustainer. They kind of go missing because it's kind of like black on black. Okay, but just make sure. I know we pack them and everything, but you're going to need them. They're down there. Now, someone says, why do you put that in there? It's because there's two key accessories that work with those rods. The guide stop, okay, it comes just like this, and also the parallel edge guide. Now, I covered that parallel edge guide, but I'll cover it again today if we have time, okay? So we include the rod so you are already pre-set up for the, some of the top accessories for the uh, OF1400 system. Okay, so when you first get this, I just got to reach in here really quick. I have to get, I should have gotten this earlier, my posi drive screwdriver, but... I do have one right here in my Festool hand tool kit. Okay, when you first get the guide stop, I want you to look. There's two pieces to it, okay? And if you notice right here, there's some screws. You have to, and it works on this rib or this rib, okay? Only one rides on it, but you have to knock out what we call the lateral tolerance or the slop. So to do that, you take a posi drive screwdriver and you can and I'll just do it like this, and you can knock out the lateral tolerance by pushing that tab forward so it slides really nice on there, okay? And you got a micro adjust there. So that's how that works. The way I like to check it out is I like to put a big lever on it just like this. So the rods go in here like this, and I always offset them because it's easier to get onto the base of the router like this for alignment because they're precision. But I'll go like this and lock them in, and I'll check just like this to make sure there's no wiggle. Hopefully that's a good tip for you. So I got my guide stop set up. I'm going to put a bit in the router. And this is a great call out on the 1400. It's this tab right here. So. It comes with a 24 millimeter wrench, and I'm going to set you up for success here, okay, when I get to profiling over here, okay? You see there's a flat spot on here. See this? This is on the shaft of the router. This is the actual collet, okay? I'm going to take the bit and put it in here like this, just bring it out, just a skosh like this. The wrench does not go on here, it goes on the collet. Someone will say, well, what's that for? Aha! You'll see it in a few minutes. So, if I'm tightening it, I'm going to press it here. 
And you've probably done this with the two wrench system. You'll go like this. You'll hold one wrench and you'll take this off and go like this. This is the, one of the beautiful things about the 1400. Check this out. It's a ratchet and call it just like that. So that saves you a, full, a few seconds here and there in changing bits. And to take it out, you just press this tab. And listen, you can just take that bit out just like this. So I'm going to tighten this up again, just like this. Okay, and I'm ready to go. I put an 18 millimeter bit in there. So Minnie, really quick, you're good at metric. What is half of 18? Nine. Did Canute tell you? Okay, you guys are good at metric. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so we have that like that. Now, I want you to pay attention to this knob right here. On other router systems, there's several knobs to tighten up on the rods of a parallel edge guide. Well, with the OF1400, there's only one knob. It's the central clamping element. And as I place that on there, that's all I have to do is just tighten that one knob. I actually call it the Una knobber. Okay. The Ted Kaczynski? No? You got it, Minnie? Got you got it? Okay, good. Okay. Hey, that <laughs> people who know me, that's the 1,423rd time I've said that. Not bad, huh? Okay. Now, <clears throat> there's another key element in setting it up on the guide rail. It's this foot. So, you see how I have the router partially riding on the uh, rail? Okay. This has a tendency to do what? tip off like this. So what the support bracket does is what? Support. Man, Big D, you're paying attention. you got a front row seat right there. Okay, so you see how I have it on there? But it's got a scale. <coughs> so, <coughs> everybody out there, correct me if I'm wrong. Does anybody else's router have a precise 100% dead-on center line on their base? If they do, please let me know because I don't think there is. Okay, and wait a minute, I know there isn't, okay? It's because, you see these rods right here? On all our routers, we precision grind them. So when we place them on this base, we can actually tell you, because there's no wiggle room in here, that that's my center line of my router bit. Watch, come over here, Chris, make sure you get this. That's the center line right there, that zero. Over here, Chris, come on over here. That's the center line right there. Okay, and... If you go around, which I'm not going to make you, Chris, right here, there's another center line. So you have precise lineup. Does that save you time? If anybody's ever set up a parallel edge guide or set up a jig they've made to do a dado, right, or a groove, more so a dado because dado's cross grain, or a mortise, that is a huge time-consuming time operation. With the Festool system, check this out. See my center line? I'm going to bring that right over to the center line, just like that. Now, Chris is in the way. I'm going to eyeball it just like this. And you know what? That's pretty good for this operation today for me. Now, I have that set up, right? So if I have an MFT table, I got unbelievable repeatability, don't I? See that? I have that set up. So I can do multiples now. Oh, my God. I'm going to take it a step further. Am I breathing hard yet? I'm good? Okay, good. Okay, so <clears throat> Minnie already told us half of 18. Here's my 18 millimeters. That's my center line. That's nine. Okay, split the difference. But I want to stop it precisely here. Look, Chris, come over here and start it precisely here. So if I can come in here, Chris, <clears throat> 18 millimeter bit, I'm going to set this scale at nine right there. Now, you might have one of these. This is called a limit stop. You get these, you get one with your TS saws, right? So if I take that and I slide it in here, I can stop and start this precisely. Okay, I'm gonna take my deflector off here every single time. So I'm gonna come over here, right? Okay. Man, we're learning about, hopefully you're learning a lot about your 1400, everybody. And see, check this out. See that? Now, if you're in the States, I believe this still comes with the guide stop. Uh, 
And does it come with uh, an imperial metric? I think it's imperial still, but there are some routers we include the guide stop and it comes in imperial. So what's half a three quarter? Three eighths. <laughs> Big D looked at me, goes, man, I'm so into metric right now, I don't know three quarter. Okay, so there we go, we can stop it, start it precisely. Now, let's talk about something I have seen so many people over the years with routers get wicked confused on. There's no need to get confused. <clears throat> okay, we are going to set depth. I want to set a depth of five millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to take it out. Look at my router bit. I'm going to take it down and I'm going to start at zero. We call that ground zero. And I'm going to lock the plunge down. So now I can mess with this. Now it's got three turrets here. You get top, middle, and bottom. I always set for myself in case I have to take depth and steps. Okay, I always set it at the bottom one. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re release this lever down and let my rod drop down to that stop. Okay, now that's at zero, right? Now I'm going to take this setting here and bring it to zero, and then I'm going to take my micro adjust. We're not going to use micro adjust today. There's no need. Hey, that's a good episode, right? Micro adjust. I can show the micro adjust on a bunch of tools, right, for Festool, because we love micro adjust. By the way, I'll just tell you, each one of these clicks is a tenth of a millimeter. That is daggone precise. I think my hair is a tenth of a millimeter. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, good. Okay, so I have zero set there. It's ball detented, okay? So I'm gonna lift this up. I need, if I, if I lock this in just like this, see how it's setting there? I statted it up <coughs> and I plunged, I would just what? I wouldn't cut anything. So what I'm gonna do is release it. I'm gonna go five millimeters more. And here's how easy it gets, everybody. I'm going to take a precise gauge block, five millimeter domino, and I'm going to put it right in there and lock it in. Don't tell me that's not easy. That's how you do depth setting. And over the years, someone says, well, I don't have dominoes. I don't have this. Do you know what's a great gauge block set? Is the shanks of your drill of your drill bits. If you have a drill bit index, you can use those. Just put that. Say you, <coughs> say you're doing something at uh, seven millimeters. Just take that, take your drill bit, put it in there, and you're good. Okay. So that's a that's a kind of a cool tip. I suggest you get the full set of gauge blocks right here. <coughs> <laughs> Get Minnie nodding over there. <laughs> She's going, absolutely. Hey, you know what's really cool? Chris, get a shot of the board really quick. We ain't even halfway done. You guys are unbelievable. Boy, we missed you so, so much. Okay, so we got depth set, right? Okay, we got depth. We got everything. Now, here is a tip I'm going to tell you on all routers. Before I put the uh, electricity to it, and before I'll put my dust extraction, I do this, because I want to verify. I'm going to make sure all my kit, as I call it, is tight, okay, so I have no movement. The other thing I'm going to show you, and this is going to come, our next operation is going to come to fruition when I talk about this. This is my dust extraction. The beauty of this size uh, diameter is 27 millimeter hose, let me see, I got one of them over here. Look, we'll go on the inside, okay? But there's a situation with this. If you're using your 1400 and you're doing a lot of splintery wood, that, that will go through here, and this is a choke point right in here, okay? Hopefully you never real, uh, come up to that because if you have a 36 millimeter, you eliminate that choke point, okay? And I'm just gonna get that, oh boy. That's tight, huh? Okay, that eliminates the choke point. So you're gonna see where I'm gonna use a 36 millimeter on this all the time. Now, <clears throat> I don't need to do it on this, but there is a window, and when you see the window on this, hopefully you can see it. A lot of people open it up only this far. It's really good to open it all the way. And you're gonna see that right over here when I do the profile bit. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it in this two little mortises in here. These are two little tenons, think of it that way. I'm gonna place it in here in this little green tab. I rotate back here and it holds that dust extraction absolutely perfect. And then I'm just gonna rotate this over and now 
I'm going to hook up my electricity, my plug it cord. <laughs> no matter how much I set up, I'm always getting oh discombobulated. Okay, the other thing I do anytime I put electricity to a router is I do this. I cycle off my switch. You don't know if you it's coming from where or whatever, and you inadvertently had left it on. Make sure it's off. Okay? I'm going to get the power to it. Remember, with a plug-it cord, it's a full quarter turn. Okay. Next, let me get my hose here. Get it over here like this. I like to do this. Now, before I put on the electricity or the power, my hand goes on here and never leaves. Okay, I'm just gonna verify in case Chris moved my depth rod. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on and I don't have to lock the plunging. Look at that. And you're going to see, see my, how my hand never left there? I'm going to let it cycle down, and there you go. Dead on and dead on, okay? So I wanted to make sure you saw that, and hopefully that was concise enough for you. Um, remember, the dust extract, look, that's all there was, okay? There would have been a lot more. We effectively catch the dust extraction, and you saw how this dust port went on there effortlessly. So here's your LS-130. Now, in a previous episode, I'll go back to it. I think it was either episode one or two or three. We talked about sanders, how to choose the right sander. And we have different orbits. Well, the orbit to the LS-130 is a linear stroke, okay? <clears throat> it comes with the sustainer, but it also comes with two pads. It comes with your right angle pad for getting into corners or close to corners. I actually use this sometimes to get into a profile like this. And it, what it does, what the LS-130 does, is it emulates hand sanding. Okay? Because you can't use a random orbit sander or a vibrating sander to do something like this. Okay, so what you go to is you get some hand sanding blocks or you get some paper that forms like granite soft roll that conforms to this. But man, over time, and say that's up on the wall and you're sanding, your hand's going to get wicked tired. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you hand sanding. Of course, you know that's hand sanding. Let me just clean that up. But what I want to show you is when you hand sand, you're left with this scratch pattern. See how it's linear? The LS-130 is the same way. Okay, so I have the pad that comes with it. It's on there, but I got a really rough paper on there. I think I got 80 grit on there. And I'm just going to take it. Remember, a plug-it cord. It's a full quarter turn. Okay, but here, and I'm going to, here's your variable speed. I'll turn it on. I'll lock it on, and you can hear it. You can go all the way down to one and all the way up. But I'm going to set it on four just so you can see the scratch pattern. And as you see, it's the same. So someone's going to say, how do you eliminate scratch pattern? Well, guess what? That's why you go up in grit. Okay, so that's how you eliminate it. So to get the 80 grit out, I'd go to 100, then I'd go to 120, then I'd go to 150. Depending on what you're going to coat it with, I'd probably stop there or 180. So that is what, that is the orbit of an LS-130. What, if you read this icon, it says to push and lift. Okay, the way I do it is I take two of those thumbs of mine, I put it right here, and I push it forward, and I take one of my fingers and lift it off. It is, I will tell you, it is that easy. You just have to understand the locking mechanism for the pad. And it's right here. It's two springs. You see, are we getting that? Okay, and you're going to see that tab and that tab, that tab and that tab. So let's look at the pad. You see these little pieces here? So when you put it back on, put it with the springs and just push it with your thumbs. It'll automatically fall down and lock in. So if I'm going to like the right angle pad, I just go like this and it's effortless. That's how it goes on. And to take it off, I push with those beautiful thumbs we're blessed with like that and lift it up. 
That's how easy it is. So I'm going to leave it at that. These are the different pads for sanding moldings or whatever. Okay, you're going to see we have, I always mess this up, concave, we have convex, we have the long pad, the scraper, and we have the DIY pad. Okay, so somebody asked, and another question somebody asked is, well, hang on before I get there. I'm going to show you the different contour pads, and I'll answer the question about the interface pad. So I'm going to take my sander over here. Big D, we got this over here too. I'm going to take the pad off. Remember, facing you. I'm going to lift it off. And let's put this pad on. I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Oh, no, I got a piece of paper right here. I'm going to grab a piece of paper, and I'm going to put it on this. And this, and if we can get this, this has a very slight radius. All of this is listed in the catalog. I can never remember these, what this one is. But it's listed in the, in the catalog. And I'm going to put, oops, I'm going to put it on here like this, where I got it. And say I'm sanding this part of some crown, Scotia, right here. See that? Okay. And if I look in here, look at that. See that point? Do we get this, guys? Okay, you see that? And it's not really matching that. Okay. Someone may go, oh, I'm going to go make a DIY pad for that. There's no need at this point. Because you can buy these. They come in a two-pack. <laughs> they come in a two-pack. These are called interface pads. So what I will suggest... Now, you could go out and get this one. This is another pad to match it. Okay? And that'll work perfectly on the sander. Remember, it's linear. Okay? But what if you have these interface pads in your arsenal? Where's that one I have? <laughs> it's on the sander. I'll take the interface pad, I'll line up the holes, I'll put that on, and then I'll take that piece of paper, just like this. So what I do, what it does, is it builds up to a bigger radius, and check this out. Now you got a nice fit in there. See that, Big D, you got that? Okay, you got a nice fit. So you can utilize those interface pads. Now another way to do it is right here. See this piece right here? Okay, now this one is pretty much a perfect fit, isn't it? See that? Okay, for this handrail. But what if I'm, I have this pad? Once again, get that interface pad in there, and guess what it does? It knocks it down to a tighter radius for this application. I'm just going to take that off. Let's slip this in, and you'll see. I'll tell you what, that was a big epiphanal moment for me when I was working with people on a job site and we were using interface pads and I went uh duh so that was another question somebody asked are you was I going over the interface pads and I made sure because think about it, I've already got it set up those are the top questions right okay so I'm going to take this off once again push it forward and you can see all the different applications different radiuses they're all in the catalog but what I want to talk about next is this pad. Okay, we call this, it's called out, I think it's called the long pad. But what people don't know about, they go, oh, I need special paper. And the other thing they don't know about it is let's flip it over. Look at that right there. This pad is fantastic. It takes two pieces of paper. There's not special paper for it. You put it on there, you fold it over. Okay, you take another piece of paper. You match it up like this. And guess where this gets you? Absolutely. You put that right on your LS-130, and you get one of the best sanders for sanding louver doors because that gets you right in between the louvers. Or I know somebody who had to sand and get that extra reach under a toe kick with flooring. So this long pad gives you the extra reach. A lot of people don't understand that. Now, the other piece that's in the catalog is this. This is called the scraper. Okay, and this is fantastic because you, it uses this motion. This is absolutely phenomenal for cleaning up uh, dried glue, cleaning up a workbench where you have a lot of spatters of paint. Okay, it's designed for scraping, scraping uh, siding, uh, scraping any kind of paint. Okay, so there you go. I know somebody who asked me one time, hey, can I get that sharpened? Yeah, you can sharpen it. I don't know what you use it for. I'm not going to do ice sculptures with it, but you know. Okay. 
<clears throat> the first thing you're going to do, and I want to show you some tips. Um, that's my setup here, but I want to show you how I went about getting my setup. I'm going to do this profile here. I will not get this. That I will hand scrape, but I want to get this profile. So the first thing I'm going to do is pretty simple. I'm going to peel this, and I want to show you some of the tips I've learned. It's always that way. When you go to peel something and you have people watching, it takes forever. <laughs> you know that. You know the skinny, everybody. Now, I'm going to use pretty much this whole piece here, but you can cut it. You're going to see off cuts I have over there. But what I want to make sure you get is I'm going to start here. I am not even going to sand that, but this is what you got to make super certain of. You get this to follow and you take your time to follow as best you can without a lot of hiccups. Okay, and now I'm going over the top of that. But now I want to get deep in there. So what I do is I take pretty much a blunt instrument and I will force it. Hopefully you guys are getting this. I will force it down in there to that point. Okay, and then I'll bring it up here. See that? So that's a perfect replication of what I want. Good? So when I put the paper on, okay, and it comes with two pieces of paper, I usually use the 60. I do the same thing. I just take my time to make sure it's on there, okay? And I'll start here on the edge where I, I really don't need it because I'm not going to grab that edge, but I'll slowly form it in there. So the time you take to do this, to get it right into that profile, the better. Now, this one's a little tricky. I don't want to take this and go like this. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually take a blunt piece of wood that I've knocked down at 45, but I'm going to take that. Now, remember, I'm not going to get down in that complete V groove, but I want to get it down as much as possible. So I think you get the gist of this. Okay, and then it's a back and forth. I'll actually push it in and try to get it as best possible. So I'm going to take that off this side. I've done a few pieces on this already. This is when um, I had some older pads that had the Brilliant in there. Okay, uh, Brilliant paper. So here's the other thing. And you know what? I'm going to get sanding with this pretty quick. <laughs> Guys, you remember when I was setting up, I go, make sure you have extras to show people. Here's the mistake I made early on. I'm going to grab my LS-130. I was told, okay, shown, that you put the block on here, just like this, okay? You turn it on and you put it on here. Okay, what I have learned over the years is that is, for me, is a little hard to control. So what I did is I always take the molding, a piece of the molding, doesn't have to be a long piece, and I get it locked in. What I definitely want is to start the pad, look, up against the fence. That way there, I have really good control this way, so I don't end up with a skewed profile on here. Okay, I lock it in, and because of the molding, I make sure I have it locked in. I get it locked here and here. So I've created a really good channel. Now, I want to show you how I used to explain it to people until Johannes and I started making a lot of these. <laughs> and he was out on a job site in San Francisco. And I'll never forget when he came back. He goes, Sedge, try this. And I did. Because I used to tell him, this is how you, you show the contractor how to do this. Okay? You put it up on that molding and you start it up like this. Okay? And you go back and forth. Okay? Okay. So you're going to see how it starts to wear in there. Okay? I'm going to take that off. Give me a second. There we go. Okay, and he, we were here, I'll never forget it, and he started going like this as we were talking. And I went, wow, that's a little bit faster. <laughs> so what I like to coach people on is do it by hand. And he was up on a scaffold, 
and he showed the contractor, the paint contractor, they love the LS-130 because he showed them, you can't take that crown down. And they were up on the scaffold, and they rubbed it back and forth and made an absolutely perfect molding in about five minutes, okay, with that 40 grit, uh, 60 grit. So I want to point that out. I am very effective now. Every time I make one, I just do it by hand. I think I have better control. Um, you just got to make sure you have a, a dust extractor handy, which I always do, because you want to just make sure that's completely cleaned up. That dust extractor should have Bluetooth. It makes it really easy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay.